Higgins obviously came out, made a statement about whether or not someone asked him point blank if he had planned on playing for the Cincinnati I Bengals. See. Yeah, I and see. Uh, yeah. you know he had a comment. We'll pull that up here in just a moment. But yeah, but your overall I, thoughts on that first? Um, I mean, I, what is he supposed to say? I guess is what I would uh, shoot back with. I mean, I, if he wants to keep it to where it's cordial with the fans, cordial with the teammates. Um, you say that, and if there is anything behind the scenes, you just let that play out, and if something happens, it happens, right? Um, also, too, it's not like he's the one directly talking with anyone else. It's just his agent, and whatever his agent tells him, that's what he's going to say. Uh, I do think, though, what he said about him loving the city and the fan base, I thought that was a little weird because I thought he already kind of showed his appreciation and love for the fan base. You don't have to reestablish that you found a new love for the city. So I, I tell guess. my wife. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's more just player speak. I don't look too much into it. Uh, the other stuff, though, um, some of the speculation about him being traded, you know, that's the stuff that really gets me excited. Um, I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but that's. He, I mean, he essentially said, I anticipate playing for the Bengals this year. But we'll see. Like, yeah. that's enough. I mean, like that 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 trends on both ways. Like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Listen, you know, guy, you guys know my opinion on the whole Justin Jefferson uh, coming to the Bengals thing. I thought it was incredibly tired that we keep doing this 2019 LSU thing. Oh, we got to get Thaddeus Moss. We got to do this. We got to get this guy, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Justin Jefferson. We're, we're getting the band back together. I thought it was tired. I wanted to move on. It was five years ago. It was great. It was a great moment in college football, and we've got two of the main pieces of the puzzle there. But we don't need to get uh, Coach O to be our head coach. Like we don't, we don't need to recreate the LSU Tigers. And I thought that that entire time. I thought it was just a tired take. But then, I don't know, you just keep, you just keep seeing some smoke over the trees. You're like, Are, is that a fire? Like, what, what's going on? Are we sure? We sure this is happening? And then, and then, a little scuttlebutt gets thrown your way. And you get a little excited. You're like, I don't know, man. I originally thought it couldn't happen. I originally thought it was just a fan base is getting, hey, we're going to get Justin Jefferson. Let's get Justin Jefferson. Yeah, whatever. If we get him, how are we going to pay for him? But like I said earlier, maybe it's just a thing where you just book the vacation and you'll pay for it later. You'll figure it out on the back end. Right. I don't know. I don't know. All I can tell you is that for the first time, and I can only speak for, for myself, for the first time I'm starting to believe that there might actually be something happening here. You got some inside sources that have been right before that have suggested that, that there is something that's holding this up that would be required to have it happen that's not too far-fetched. I – kind of. Yeah, I, I, I heard from people that have told me things before – Right, I don't have, I don't claim to have sources, but right. I heard from people that's, that well, that's have, exactly what they are. But go ahead, that have that have told me things that have come true before. That there is a deal in place; they're just waiting on on T Higgins what? to get an extension. Give, for an example, an we're not going to out your sources here, but give me the example where they were right and it happened. They told me that DJ Reader was. Uh, got an embarrassing offer from the Cincinnati Bengals that made him disgruntled. He wanted to come back to the Bengals, and uh, they gave him an embarrassing offer, and then he went up to the Lions and then went on Kay Adams' and show and said he wanted to be a Bengal but got disrespected by the offer. So Interesting. check, 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 check. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, that, that's my same, I guess we're, we're going to call it source as well. Um, but something just broke that kind of helps open up this conversation a little bit because Reed kind of explained what the, the details are of this rumor, yep. which is the deal has already been worked out between these two teams, between the Vikings and the Bengals in terms of compensation, but it was all about contract. Can they get the contract figured out? The, the, the Vikings with an extension with T, right? Yeah, and – we just we have got breaking news. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, the Eagles, they just signed Devontae Smith. Oh. A three-year $75 million deal. Oh. Guarantees include $51 million. 
Packers. So this looks like the floor, as Drew Garrison just put in the chat, this looks like a, a T. Higgins kind of contract, or at least like the floor of what he'd get. Probably deserves a little bit more. But it also shows that the Philadelphia Eagles are paying two t- big-time wide receivers. That's right. And a quarterback. It, it opens up different doors for, for both sides, right? Even if the Vikings conversation is null and void, this kind of reopens up the door for the Bengals in terms of renegotiating with T. I mean, one has a different pedigree. One has a first-round uh, status, a Heisman behind his name. Um, this is technically a, a five-year deal if you look at it that way because they're adding that fifth-year extension onto that contract. So it really plays out to a more like a – five-year, $100 million deal. But the guarantees are still the same. And if that's what's really holding up T. Higgins and signing with the Cincinnati Bengals, I don't know. I I think that they could get a deal done again if they want to open up the table of negotiations again. Um, But again, that that requires uh, someone to step down what their normal asking price was. So that's on the the player side, on T. Higgins' side. So I – it's tough to tough to see. When we, is that guaranteed? Fifty millions guaranteed. Fifty one right? is fifty one. Fifty one's guaranteed. You think that the Bengals are gonna uh, are gonna go against the grain of what they've traditionally done outside the quarterback position and and give that much guarantee to T Higgins? Do you think? Well, I guess the better question would be. I, I, this may be a more fun question. Would be T Higgins and I, and listen. He has had great moments in Bengals uniforms and and when, and when healthy, I think that T Higgins you could argue is a number one receiver in the NFL. The question ultimately is, though, do you value T. Higgins that much to stay? Yeah, so the, the trend for Bengals is they, they, they will pay players at top positions of priority. Like, they re-signed A.J. Green. They re-signed Carlos Dunlap. They re-signed Geno Atkins. Andrew Whitworth, said, right? Andrew, like, well. The first yeah, time. The first time. The first time. The first time. Um, which this would fall under that T. Higgins category. It just depends on what – how they view him? Do they view him as a top twenty, a top ten? Um, obviously, they probably view him as like a top twenty-five player in the NFL at that position. And T. Higgins thinks otherwise, and that's the only reason why the deal hasn't gotten done up to this point. Otherwise, they probably would give out more guarantees. But something like this, where Devonte, who's in that similar mold, not the similar type of receiver. Um, maybe similar in terms of like the injury history or that concern that um, follows Devontae Smith being smaller and similar play in terms of stats and things like that. I think that, uh, that this is a good bridge between where the Bengals and T Higgins could potentially fall. Um, if it's maybe even an extra 5 million in guarantees, I think that's like, what, what's the difference? I mean, 50 or 55. I mean, it sounds really big, but in all honesty, that would be a huge payday for T Higgins regardless. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's interesting where we're at right now with the whole T Higgins thing contract situation. In short, in short of all this scuttlebutt, all this rumors that that may or may not come true. This is exactly where I stand. I'm still geared up that that T Higgins is going to play for one final year as a Cincinnati Bengal, and then probably will go off his merry way. I think that's the most likely scenario here. But from rumors that we've heard, it would be like a, a fir- this year's first round pick, next year's second round pick, and T Higgins for Justin Jefferson, which would be, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would do that absolutely in a heartbeat. Um, Mainly because, one, you're getting two of the top three best receivers in all of football back together. Um, I don't think we've ever seen something like that in the NFL. Maybe, like, if you want to try to compare, like, the Ashlon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall for the Bears, but that's not even close. Um, I think it opens up a lot of doors offensively for your team. Um, I think that all the players available at round one don't even compare to what Justin Jefferson's probably going to give you for the rest of that time there in Cincinnati. Um, how many years and, would be worth it for J uh, for, for that specific uh, trade that, scenario? How many years would be worth it? You'd have to extend JJ. Yeah, so yeah it, 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 it would be, it would be it, the closest thing. And I would argue it's better than Isaac Bruce and Tory Holt. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good one. That's that's a cool, that's and, I, and I, and I actually think that they would be better than those two, which is, Correct. A, which is saying a lot. Yeah. That's a better comparison. So. In in all, if, if we're gonna go down the speculation of if the Bengals could get uh, 
Justin Jefferson. I believe Joe and Jamar have stated that they would, they take, would take a little. Pay cuts. They would take a pay cut to make that happen. That's the other so. Thing too. I mean, you're still going to be looking at at least close to fifty percent, forty five to fifty percent of your salary cap at, as its current state going to three players, which is a bit scary. But I don't know. Like I said, I didn't think it, it made a whole lot of sense just a few weeks ago. But, you know, at some point you just got to get excited about exciting things. So I'll do that. I think it's I'll a little unlikely. I, th- can I, I, I think it's a little It is unlikely. unlikely. I do think, like, this, this trade uh, makes a lot of sense for the Bengals, but I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense for the Vikings because of the compensation, <laughs> if it is true. Uh, you getting pick 18 doesn't – like, yeah, you could probably combine – 18 and 11 to jump up to, to five or four or whatever they want to go to to get their quarterback of the future. But I don't know if it makes a lot of sense to also trade away Justin Jefferson as well. And they've got plenty of offensive talent. Could, but Could you guys imagine this? They make this trade. Justin Jefferson is a Cincinnati Bengal. In the offseason, we get to the preseason, and, and all of a sudden Zach Taylor says, ah, I don't want to get any of these guys hurt again. We're not playing them. Gets to the regular season. First four games, they go one and three. Could you imagine the state of this city with Justin Jefferson, <laughs> Jamar Chase, and Joe Burrow starting one and three yet again under Zach Taylor because yet again he didn't want to play him during the you preseason. You and your hypotheticals, Could man. you imagine I'll tell what you, this your city poor would brain, do? It just goes to places could, that no could, other human what do you brain think, what do you think? What do you think the Bengals – What do you think the Bengals – What this city would do? What do you think the Bengals' uh, record is the last three seasons in the first four weeks? Is it 500? I, wanted, I would I wanted, say under 500. It's exactly 500. It went 3-1, and 2-2, one, 1-3. Two and two, one and Sounds like a lot of struggles. <laughs> what, are the, what are the records on uh, the first two games? Or, first two, well, 0-2 oh last year. Correct. 0-2 uh, oh this year. What's the record in the first quarter of the first game? <laughs> um, but you, you want to do the record at the end of the year? No, I don't want to do that game. Uh, okay. That doesn't fit my narrative. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Regardless. Well, here's the thing. You, you had mentioned, I don't know why the Vikings would do this. I'm being serious. The Vikings are in a position right now where do we think that Justin Jefferson matters at all to them? They would be, they would like be they, getting – They're, they're not be winning they're, football games, guys. We all know uh, this. I don't no, know. They're not winning football games, I don't football know, games, man. man. Hey. They're listen, just not. They're listen. not. They have, a, they, have a, they have something that they hold right now that people value, what I would consider significantly. You need to – you would like to think that if you were the Vikings, you would want to cash in on that opportunity. I do Caleb, think. Will, this, this is my take on the Minnesota Vikings. There is not, for all the teams, all the teams that are looking to draft a quarterback this year, there is, without a doubt, not a better spot to land than Minnesota. They've got, at the moment, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, a very smart offensive-minded head coach, O'Connell, who won a lot of games with some really bad quarterback play this past year. And uh, made Kirk Cousins look like a superstar. Kirk Cousins is very good. Kirk Cousins is very good. Made him look like a superstar. We, he, the, the Minnesota area is with it's it's a great spot for a quarterback to land at the. I hope moment. Justin Fields can go there then. Oh, he's, well, he's already on the team. Well, I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, and it's in a he's playing in a division with not a lot of good defense. That's true so, too. I I out of all of the preseason win totals, which we haven't even gone over that. The one I like the most is Minnesota Vikings over six and a half. I think they win at least seven. So you're suggesting to me right now that Vegas has these guys, the one, the team that you think that is that is prone for a quarterback to come in and succeed right away. They have that team at six and a half wins. Right. And you're suggesting to me that they should hold on to a piece that in which otherwise becomes relatively worthless in the near time frame. I didn't say that. Because of did six I say, and a half. Did I say that? No, I'm saying that, that, that I, I said, let's be honest. The Minnesota Vikings are not going to win football games, and you're over here suggesting that they might. I think they might. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do think that they're going to win. I do think they're. I think they the can be around 500 though. without a doubt. And what does that win you? Around 550 percent of your games. Yeah, I'm just saying. What does that win you though? It's it's it it's, wins it's, you about it's irrelevant. Percent of your you games. become a nobody in 10 years. No one even remembers the season. But it's a, it's I, a I season in which they're you're, getting you, a rookie you, quarterback. What are, not, what are you arguing? I'm arguing that at some point you move on from pieces that you have yeah. value from. That's what I'm arguing. Yeah, I think that they should make the trade. If they get a first and a second round pick in T. Higgins, and that's a no-brainer for them. What? what? And why are, wouldn't the Bengals do that? I, I think that's where we're at. What? Well, that's my point. So it should be done deal then. If T. Higgins gets an extension, yeah. 
Yeah, that's, the, that's the whole. It's, hold it's, all, it's that's... the whole. The whole hang up from the, from the sources that I've heard is that the the extension for T Higgins is about ten million dollars off in guaranteed money. Like from what it, I've heard, I'll, I'll read the text out. Yeah, it, I'll read. The, it, let, let me he read wants this text. 60, that I got. And I'm suggesting that I don't. Let's, uh, let's if, say if the I'm text, the Vikings, I'm 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 more more or less interested in draft capital than than trying to find some solution. Real quick, this is the T text. Higgins. This okay. is the text. I know we got a break. I've been told T. Pick 18 in next year's second round for Justin Jefferson has been agreed to. Jefferson has agreed to in a deal with the Bengals. So Justin Jefferson would get an extension with the Bengals. The roadblock is T's extension in Minnesota, which is about $10 million in guarantees off. The person telling me this would not lie to me. 